You know, we've heard of mission trips and, and, and things like that, but what exactly are they? Tonight we're going to be talking with three Clarion University students who have gone on mission trips in the last year or two. Also, you know, I like to talk to you about what's going on in the news and sort of give you my opinion. Well, it's time for my weekly roundup of the presidential race. It's all coming up next on Feedback. As I said tonight on Feedback, we're going to be talking with three Clarion University students who have gone on mission trips in the last uh, year or two uh, to some interesting places, to Italy, to Mexico, and to Costa Rica. So it should be kind of interesting. You might have seen the article about them uh, in Thursday's Clarion Call. Uh, very interesting. But uh, let's talk about some things on the home front maybe here. Uh, it's the presidential election. It is everywhere. That's, that's all you're hearing about. It's the uh, front page of the papers. It's all over the newscast because we're like 40 or some days away at this point, I think, maybe in the 50s, but we're not that far away from it, uh, coming up here in November. And uh, so I promise every week that at least one night I'm going to talk to you about it and uh, give you sort of my opinion on what's going on and, and pass along some opinions of others that I've read, which is what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to talk to you about a, uh, a column written by Stephen Hess in USA Today on Monday, but before I do that, I just want to read you, I thought this was so funny. This is in Monday's USA Today as well. Uh, USA Today has this, like, the election line, just a little news briefs. Um, it's, it's slugged, a final wish, and uh, here is what it says. In Canton, Ohio, a newspaper obituary for James Fett, 71, asked people to remember him by doing what he couldn't do. The last line of the obituary in the repository read, quote, in lieu of flowers, vote Bush. So George W. Bush is now out there courting the dead vote. Uh, so I, I think it should be in lieu of flowers, vote shrub. I think, you know, the whole garden theme kind of fits in there. I think that's a little cuter. But I thought that was kind of funny. I thought you might enjoy that, pass, pass that along for you. Uh, but also in Monday's paper, uh, there was an article by Stephen Hess, actually his column, uh, talking about the coverage we're getting of these candidates now. Now, what have you been hearing about in the last few months? Okay, well, we've heard about the debate over debates. What, what are the debates going to be? We, we've been, that's all it seems we've been talking about. Um, we, we, we hear a lot about, you know, Bush comes out with a plan for prescription drugs and Medicare, and so does Gore to kind of rebut it. But we don't necessarily get all the details of it. In fact, I, I was watching a press conference. Al Gore's Medicare plan, I think it was he came out with, was like 74 pages wrong. Who of us is going to sit there and read through the whole plan and really probably be able to understand the whole plan? Um, there's also been a lot of talk about the character of these two candidates. Uh, as you may know, a few weeks ago, George W. Bush called a reporter from the New York Times a word that rhymes with glass bowls, which I can't say on the air, but you can probably figure out what it was. Um, so they've been talking a lot about character, and as you probably know, I don't think George W. Bush's character is suited to be in the White House. Uh, not that I always think Al Gore is the best person for the job. I think I'm voting for him because he's the lesser of two evils, um, but I don't think George W. Bush is the right person. But anyway, uh, Stephen Hess was, was talking about, you know, we're not really getting substantial reporting of this. He brought up a few interesting points. Let me just read these to you. Number one, he says, the new president, whoever it will be, will make 600 Senate-confirmed appointments to his cabinet and sub-cabinet. Those are the people who are going to be running the country. You know, obviously, you know, George W. Bush, if he gets it, I hope not, uh, but if he gets it, he will be the figurehead of the country. But there are so many people under him, so many advisors, the same thing for Al Gore, who, who really run a lot of the departments of the country. Who are, who are these candidates going to nominate? I'm sure, you know, we can guess some of the people that they have around them now are probably going to be in there, but we don't know that. I think that's a very valid question to ask. Also, he brings up, Stephen Hess brings up that uh, ever since Franklin Roosevelt's presiden presidency, there's been a lot of talk about what happens in the first hundred days of a candidate's presidency. And uh, why, why aren't we talking about that? Let's find out what these, these uh, candidates want to go in and do as soon as they're elected into the office. I think the media is not covering this very well. Uh, you know, I check our faxes here at the, at the TV station every day, and I'd say I get at least 
10 pages of faxes from the George W. Bush campaign, talking points sent out to the media, sent uh, out to the p political pundits out there. Uh, we get the George W. Bush ones. We don't get the Al Gore ones. Um, I don't know why, how we just happened to end up on uh, the Bush fax list. Um, I, I don't really read them because I don't really think that's the way to report the news from a press release from, from the campaign. And this is actually how I'm seeing the reports of this are being driven, how media reports are being driven. Uh, so I caution you to be very wary of what you're seeing. I think coming up in the debates uh, in the next month or two, we're going to see more of, of these candidates. So obviously, we're seeing more and more every day, but we're going to hear more about their plans, and they're going to get to be able to talk to each other. Jim Lehrer from PBS, I know, is moderating um, at least one of the debates, uh, maybe all three, I'm not real sure. but. He is going, I, I, I'm, I've seen his work, he's done the debates before, and I think he can handle it very competently. But I think my suggestion to you is you uh, step back from this and look at this. Is this what a pundit is telling me, what you're hearing on the news? Uh, is this coming from a press release? It certainly could be. Is it something that I should really be listening to? Uh, and watch the debates, although I did hear, I read in the paper that NBC and Fox will not be televising uh, at least one of the debates because of a baseball game that's on. That is more important. They said that's actually in the contract they have to air the game. So that shows you what's more important in this country, doesn't it? A baseball game over the presidential debates, deciding how the country is going to go in the next four years. So that's my weekly uh, talk to you uh, from the pulpit here, I guess, of, uh, about what's going on in the presidential race. Um, but we're going to take a break now. When we come back, uh, we're going to be talking with Three students here from Clay University have gone on mission trips in the last year. It should prove to be a very uh, enlightening conversation. Stay with us. We'll be back with that after this. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. As I said earlier, uh, tonight we're talking about mission trips. What are they? You know, I'm sure you've heard the term, but, but what exactly are they? We're talking with some Clarion University students who, tonight who uh, actually have gone on some mission trips. You may have seen an article about them in the Clarion Call last week. Uh, joining us tonight is Allie Ray, Kaylee Seven, and Trish Gurdon. Thank you guys for joining us. I appreciate it. You're uh, let me just throw out the question here. Um, we'll go down the line. What is a mission trip? What, what, what did you think it was, and what did it end up being for you? Okay, um, I know for me, I left, I've been on a bunch of mission trips in the past um, as a leader and also um, just as a volunteer going on them. But um, when I left for this one to Italy, I kind of, I thought, I thought a mission trip was going off to another country and helping people and serving God that way. But I came back realizing that a mission trip can be anywhere. It can be next door. It can be in Clarion. Um, basically, a mission trip is just helping people and serving God through that way and teaching people 
about God, ne not necessarily through, um, through your voice, but just through your actions also. Mm -hmm. okay. Haley? Yes, I agree with what Allie said. Um, it's not necessarily something that you have to do in a different country, but it can be something that is right here in Clarion or in Pittsburgh or um, in the tri-state area. And I also think that a mission trip is where um, you either, well, you can do, you can talk and voice your Christian beliefs, um, or you can serve people and show them your Christian beliefs, or you can even do both. Mm -hmm. okay. Trish? Um, a mission trip is helping people out in whatever form they need help in. Like, if they, if somebody doesn't have clothes, you may go down or go over and supply them with clothes mm -hmm. or food or or build them a house or something, anything serving them because mm -hmm. um, it's it's nice to help people. The Bible says that um, whatever we do to one of the least of these, we do it to the Lord. And helping other people is a way of serving God. And so that's why these mission trips are really important. Okay, let's talk about individually. Let's go down the line. Tell us um, where you went on the trip and basically what you did there. Alan? Okay, I spent um, this past summer in Naples, Italy. Um, it's right on, off of the Mediterranean Sea, so that was, it was beautiful, beautiful scenery, idea. yeah, <laughs> it was great. Um, very hot, but um, basically what we did, there was myself and six other college students from Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan, um, and we um, worked in a center, and we played with the kids during the day, and we would also do yard work, and a lot of manual work, just um, painting and building parts of houses. And um, then in the afternoon, we would go to the center and play with the children and just do skits and um, make crafts with them. And, basically just letting them see how much um, we love Christ and how important that is in our lives mm -hmm. and kind of teaching them different aspects of Christianity and what it means to be a Christian and um, just loving them and building relationships and a lot I built a lot of close friendships with the kids over there and that was a lot of fun. So were they speaking English, the kids, uh, or, or did you no, have to learn Italian? No, I didn't learn Italian. <laughs> I learned a little bit while I was over there, but um, and a couple, they're taught English from a very young age, mm. so a bunch of them, especially once you hit like 13-year-olds um, and older, they really could speak it well enough that we could understand. Mm -hmm. So that was helpful. Mm -hmm. But by the end, after six weeks, we were picking up the language. Well, that's so, yeah. <laughs> so that helped. So you got, a, you got language out of this, too, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember much now, but. <laughs> uh, Kaylee, tell us about your trip. Um, like Ali, I've been on several mission trips. And this past summer, I went to Costa Rica in July um, for 11 days. And it, it was their winter there, so we didn't get tons and tons of sun <laughs> or nice weather. Um, but it was, a, it was a great time. We have a sister church, meaning um, that I go to a church in Pittsburgh that has an affiliation with them. Um, probably for the past eight or nine years, we've been sending um, teens down to correspond with our church and to build as ch a church family with this church in um, Cartago in Costa Rica. So when we went down, we um, were connected with the youth group there and, we, and also the church there, and we built relationships with the families in the church. We actually stayed with families in Cartago for a few days. And then, um, like Allie, we did uh, a thing called a Jesus Club where you do a skit and songs and crafts, and we played countless games of Jenga and Uno with them. <laughs> and uh, then we took the kids that we met, with parental permission, of course, um, and some teens from the local area to a retreat center. Um, and it was about four hours away from actual Cartago, and we set up a retreat facility for them, which entailed of more um, relational building activities, games, uh, skits, songs, and there was a Bible lesson every day, which presented um, the Christian beliefs through the Bible. Um, and I think we, there's just, it's, I'm sure that they can tell you there's, there's not enough words to describe mm -hmm. what you go through, so it was wonderful. All right, we'll just try to put some words <laughs> <laughs> about what your experience. Um, last November, over Thanksgiving break, I went with Kaylee's church mm -hmm. to Juarez, Mexico, and she went also. And it was a week or so time of various activities. We went to two orphanages and spent two or three days there during the day. Um, we played games with the kids. We told them Bible stories. We did puppets, sang songs in Spanish. Um, so you learned another language too, or did you go knowing Spanish? <laughs> I went knowing Spanish. Oh, you did? Oh, you, she had the upper hand. <laughs> Not a heck of a lot, but a decent amount. Um, and we had a Thanksgiving time on Thursday. Our Thanksgiving, of course, it's not theirs in Mexico, but we told them about Thanksgiving, and 
we served them hot dogs, macaroni and cheese for Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner, and it was the best Thanksgiving dinner I've ever eaten. And um, other things we did down there, we had a Jesus Fiesta, Jesus party, where it was just games, like a little carnival type thing, and that was really fun. And um, one day we fed the kids breakfast in the morning. Well, it wasn't really breakfast. It was like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches before they headed mm -hmm. off to school if they went to school. So it was good times. What ages are we talking about that each of you were dealing with? Uh, I dealt with two-year-olds to 25-year-olds. Oh. So, yeah, and even some of their parents. So we were oh, really? we dealt with a lot of different ages. I mean, same. Same. And mm -hmm. what about in the next class? Whereas it was, at the orphanage, it was, orphanages, it was probably about four up to, what do we say? Probably 12. Like 12 or so. Some had parents, some didn't. If they had parents, they couldn't support them, so they sent them to orphanages. And other times when we weren't in the orphanages, we were dealing with people that were, you know, babies all the way up to, like, old, older ladies. Mm -hmm. And hmm. it was So, all it was, you know. I'm guessing you got to see then quite a wide spectrum of, of people, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in America we're exposed to a lot of people, but, you know, what were your impressions maybe uh, of the people, what did you think about seeing these other cultures, how they react, was it a shock mm -hmm. to you at all? Um, actually, yeah, it was, it was a shock, shock? Um, because the American culture were extremely materialistic mm -hmm. and focused on just that. And these families were focused on their families and on their work and on really taking the time to get to know somebody rather than liking them for their material worth. So it was very, very humbling to go there. Um, I know, I'm not sure about Allie, but um, when I went to Costa Rica and in Mexico, we weren't allowed to dress like we would here. Oh, really? Yeah, we had a certain dress code and mm. we weren't allowed to wear makeup or, I, in Costa Rica, we didn't take curling irons or hair dryers or anything like that. Really? So. It was hard to get used to that kind of culture, but to, for right. them, that that's normal. And if we right. would walk in there all decked out from head to toe, they would they just wouldn't. they wouldn't be able to relate to us at all. Yeah, uh, I want to follow up on a couple of those things, but we're going to sneak a break in here. Um, when we come back, we're going to show you some pictures from their trips, and then I have a superficial question about kind of what you thought of the cities you were in as a as a tourist. We're going to talk about that. I also want to follow up on some cultural things. So stay with us. More conversation about mission trips coming up next on Feedback after this. wants to know if that girl will go out with him, pass it down. Hey, Grandma, ask the girl on the end if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes. Hey, me too. <laughs> Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so there's no question later. It may not look like it. But you're watching the future of the Earth pass by. Because many of these products are made from materials you've been recycling. But to keep recycling working, you need to buy products that say, made from recycled materials. For all those next in line, it would mean the world to them. said, you know, it wouldn't a better name for a movie to come out now, and I think I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have, and you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know, so what's well, awesome about scheduling. Um, why, is it, why is it that students have such a problem here? With Tune into Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night, beginning at 7.30 p.m. We're totally out of time. No time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow.
Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. Uh, we've been talking about mission trips and what they are and the fun you can have on them. Uh, we have some pictures to share with you now um, from these ladies' trips. Uh, we'll start with Allie's. Um, I'll just put the picture up here. We'll see if we can we can get a shot of it. And Allie, if you could just explain to us maybe what the sure. first picture is. Uh, one of the days we were down there, we had a carnival, we called it, and we did different games with the kids, and that's what we were doing in the picture. We set up um, face painting and um, water balloon tosses and those kind of games. And you can see in the back of the picture Mount Vesuvius, so um, oh. it was it was right behind the center. So oh, <laughs> luckily really? it didn't erupt while we were there, <laughs> because it, it, it is an active volcano. It okay. is due for an eruption soon. Oh, so <laughs> well, you could have seen history. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, let's move on to this one. Okay, um, it wasn't all work while we were there. We did take one day off a week and did touristy things. And one of the days we went to the island of Capri and we ran into Lisa Kudrow, Phoebe from Friends. Oh, I didn't even look and see who that was. Yeah. Okay, wait, okay, I can look. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, so um, we just started talking really? to her, playing with her son, and finally we were like, are you Lisa Kudrow? And she said, yeah. And she asked about our mission trip and we were able to tell her why we were there and talk to her about God. And so How about it was really that? neat. Yeah, and she wasn't ditzy like she was on the show. She was very nice. What are the odds of that? Yeah. <laughs> like you have to go to a foreign country to meet someone on Friends. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I should have looked at these <laughs> mental note, look beforehand okay. next time. Okay, what is um, this one? These are three of the girls that I was closest with there. Um, Miriam, Antonella, and Eliza. And um, they're 13, around 12 and 13 years old. And they're just, they're sweethearts. I miss them. Um, they spoke English fairly well, so I was able to communicate with them. And we've written each other back and forth. Um, we're trying to keep in touch, so. And, now they, they could speak English then, or? Yeah, okay. especially one of them. She was kind of our translator. She helped us a lot <laughs> with different things, so it was okay. a big help. Uh, let's move on to Kaylee's pictures now. I'll look at it beforehand. Oh, look, I see, what, was that Goofy in there? Yeah. Well, okay, take a look at this. Explain this to us. Um, that is the Rodriguez family. I had mentioned before that we stayed with the Costa Rican families, and that was her family. The girl in the middle, um, her name is Melanie Burson, and she was another team member of mine. And everyone in that household spoke Spanish except for um, one of the older boys, so it was very hard to communicate yeah. with them sometimes, Jeez. especially when you don't speak Spanish too well. <laughs> Okay, let's do one. Boy, there's a lot of this one. Yeah, um, is this one? that is a picture of the entire team that we took to the retreat center. It's the American team and the Costa Rican team put together. I think there are maybe about 40 of us there. I didn't really count, but um, it's a picture of us before we left for the weekend. So, so this is all the, the, the kids and everything that you were taking right. to this retreat you were talking right. about? Right. Okay. Look at that, okay. Uh, this, this is, is moving, one. yes, this is moving into when Trisha and I went to Juarez over Thanksgiving break. That little boy's name is Martin, and he, um, we had a Thanksgiving tree that we made for them out of just fabric, and they got to put up their name and decorate it with things that they were thankful for. Mm -hmm. And he put my name on one of the leaves, oh. and um, he was in an orphanage that we visited, and so he was very dear to my heart. And I didn't want to leave him, I wanted to adopt him. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go on to Trish now. In this okay, um, that's me, one of the other ladies on our team, and two of the children at the orphanage on the same day as the Thanksgiving party we had there. The one in the pink is Rocio, and that's her little sister. These two are social orphans. They don't have, or they do have parents, but they can't support them. And so they come here. And it was just really great. Ro Rocio was she just picked me out and she wanted me to sit by her and she just hung around me the entire time and she was just so precious. Yeah, we're, you know, we're quickly running out of time. I assume we have, a, we have about three minutes left. So um, let me ask my superficial question. Uh, going to these places, you know, especially Italy, I mean, what was it like to see these cities, you know, we're talking about, but you know, almost having a volcano <laughs> in the background. Um, what, what was it like, you know, what were these cities like? What did they look like? Um, and maybe your cultural impressions, we were talking about a little bit before, but what did you think from a tourist point of view, say you were on vacation? Okay, um, the touristy places we went to, like Sorrento and Capri and Positano, um, they were beautiful. Um, mm. They build them up and there's a lot of tourists from all over the world there. And I mean, just breathtaking. It's just amazing just to stand back and think, wow, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the actual city of Naples, it can get dirty at different points, especially there are poor, very poor parts of the city. And um, people keep their own houses clean and then right outside on their, their streets, it's just filthy. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. so. But, but there were the beautiful parts. Yeah, there were definitely <laughs> beautiful parts. I love. I can't wait to go back. Oh, so are you, are you going? To I go want back? to. Yeah. As a mission trip or? I don't a know. Vacation? I haven't decided. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> um, probably a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Because I don't think I could go there and not play with these kids mm -hmm. and do different skits. So. Seems like it's such a great attachment you've all made. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
What, what did we think about the city? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't plan on a vacation in oh, really? either. I would definitely wouldn't go to Juarez <laughs> for vacation. Um, very, very dusty and dirty and very extremely impoverished. Um, Cartago wasn't really that bad, but I still, if I didn't know the people, that's what made it attractive to me. The city itself really wasn't all that spectacular. Um, the retreat center that we did go to, though, was on the, one of the beaches, and it was beautiful. So I would consider going there. And we got to travel through the rainforest and the volcanoes and stuff like that, so that was interesting. Um, you were talking, uh, maybe Trish, you can explain this. We have like a minute left. We were saying um, about, during the break, about how the Nike symbol means oh, yeah. something in Mexico? Down in Juarez, Nike symbol is a gang symbol. So we may just wear it on our shoes or clothes, and it doesn't affect us at all. But down there, it's dangerous if you get caught wearing a Nike symbol. So if you ever go to Juarez, don't wear a Nike so symbol. So you guys were then instructed beforehand on right. what you needed to do, all three right. of you? Well, we weren't informed that well, my no. We didn't meet until two days before we left. Oh, so. but you guys had some. Yeah, we had training And you were told about dress and things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, I mean, so you're right. I mean, Americans don't realize how things are done. And it's a totally different culture. Where oh, we yeah. So, thumbs up on the experience for all of you? Definitely. definitely. <laughs> so, you know, look at this now. So, you definitely, I mean, I'm going back. You are going back? Yeah, to me too. Yeah. I would like to. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. I very awesome. much appreciate it. Um, if you guys, you know, if you see them on campus and you're interested in doing this, I'm volunteering them. Just stop them, <laughs> ask them for information. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Uh, we'll be right back after this on Feedback. Listen if that girl go out with him, pass it down. Hey, Grandma, ask the girl on the end if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes. Hey, me too. <laughs> Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so there's no question later. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by The Carpet Barn. The Carpet Barn is located at 470 South 5th Avenue in Clarion. The Carpet Barn is open Monday through Saturday for all your carpet needs. So call The Carpet Barn, 226-7332. Out from the crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in a Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon to five. Welcome back. You know what I just found out during the break? Like, these mission trips are wonderful for all the reasons that they've named, but Trish met her boyfriend on the trip, so you can find love on these trips. You can find Lisa Kudrow, you can find love. What more? I mean, we don't need to sell this anymore tonight. I think, I think we've sold it. Uh, anyway, once again, I want to I wanna thank these ladies for joining us tonight. It was very interesting and informative. Um, next Tuesday night, we will not be on Borough Council. We'll be on starting at 7 o'clock here on TV5. And then make sure you tune in on Wednesday. It's a big show. I'm very excited about this show. Uh, World famous, at least in my eyes, jazz singer, cabaret singer, and now Broadway star, Ann Hampton Calloway will be speaking with us. She is a Tony Award nominee 
uh, for her performance in the new Broadway musical Swing. So we're going to be talking to her about uh, the CDs that she's had out for, for years now and also her performance in Swing. So that is coming up for you on next Wednesday's show. Uh, we will see you then. TV5 News is next. Thanks for joining us.